All right, fig lovers, we have another variety to review for you guys today. This one I've been waiting for a long time to taste, and it's finally here. This one's called Nin ZS. It comes from the town of Nin, N-I-N, in Croatia. And it was found there near the uh, excavations, I believe, of a church. And there's a grower named uh, Michael or Michal. Sorry, bud. I don't know how to pronounce her name exactly, but uh, this is a, a variety from his collection in the Czech Republic. And um, this was found by him on his travels there, along with the other variety, Nin V, in the town of Nin in Croatia. Uh, it's a very productive fig, I'm finding. Uh, it's also rather, I think, mid-season or on the earlier side, it's definitely not late. And the tree is really starting to produce figs now. I've already harvested two. We included this in the tasting that we did, um, where we tasted roughly 15 or 20 different figs at one time and compared them. Um, this fig has a really nice shape. It's elongated, uh, pyroform, the figs hang very well. It is a, has an eye that is, I guess, slightly open. Um, and in general, I would expect big things from this fig in cooler seasons, cooler climates, um, shorter season climates, and humid climates. It seems like this fig has got a lot of good characteristics going for it, along with its um, partner there, uh, Nin V, that was found in the same town and very close by. They do seem to be different figs, um, although they look very similar. In fact, uh, they have a um, pretty long stem, a long neck, similar shape to them, similar teardrop shape to them. I compared Nin V a couple of years ago um, to uh, the variety of Golden Celeste um, that it has like, or even LSU Huye, that it has like a light berry flavor combined with some honey flavors there. And it also reminded me in shape and look of a Golden Celeste or even a LSU Huye. In fact, if you had LSU Huye actually next to this, um, it would look rather similar. Um, the Nin V, by the way, I haven't really been able to review it or talk much about it because I, after realizing how much I loved it and was interested in it, I planted it in the ground in the fall and it ended up dying that winter. So a friend of mine, uh, Grant, thank you Grant, I sold a tree to him and he was able to get me a tree back of Nin V that I then planted here in the ground. It's gonna fruit, we're gonna get to evaluate it again. Um, probably at a lower fruit quality than I would like, but the tree is actually doing fantastic and growing really well in the ground. And not only is this variety uh, getting established of Nin V, but also Nin ZS, because I have one here that's really nice in a container. And I also have one in the ground that also is going to fruit this year. Um, I also have a couple, quite a few copies of this tree in smaller pots. So if anyone's interested in buying this, uh, this is one at least in this current moment that I will have for sale. Uh, you can find the listings at any time of what's available on my blog, figboss.com, at the store tab there at the top. Um, this one, so far, in the tasting that we did, has been very impressive. I really am liking this. It's also potentially pollinated. I did mark this here on the stem, indicating that we injected it with pollen. Now, there is one other weird thing with this fig, is that it does seem to have a little bit of, I don't know if you can call it mite damage, but there's these interesting markings that uh, Hardy Chicago, I often see on the Hardy Chicago figs, uh, especially on younger, more immature trees, they get these brown spots on the bottom. And you don't really see it when they ripen because Hardy Chicago's a dark fig, but on this variety here, it's yellow. And there are these brown spots that are now showing up as it's mature and you're still seeing them. But this is not on every fig and the figs I'm looking at over there that were swelling, that are swelling, I should say, 
they don't have any of this brown spotting. Uh, but I think some of them, because they just developed this way, there's a few I see here on the tree with this brown spots. Um, this is then going to show up as it ripens. So I don't know if that's going to continue. I think it's probably like mite damage or some immaturity thing. Uh, I can't really figure it out exactly. Uh, but I've seen it again on Hardy Chicago. And normally you don't even see it. And this is also very different than sugar spots. It's not sugar spots. It's not from the humidity. Um, it's just something I thought worth pointing out and obvious, an obvious difference. Oh, oh, okay. So this one is probably pollinated. A very uh, distinct difference here between what I've seen uh, the other day and what I'm seeing right now. Now, obviously I don't have a ripe one to compare side by side. However, this Ninzi S does appear to be pollinated because the unpollinated is actually dark, uh, a lighter red to dark red. Whereas this is like amber and this is consistently what I'm seeing on a lot of the figs that, that do look pollinated or did look like they benefited from this pollination. So um, I'll know the difference when I taste it, if there is a significant difference, hopefully I can remember. Um, it would be nice to have them side by side, but also uh, we'll see if there's seed crunch and I probably will save seeds from this to test, to know for sure. Very different, very interesting pulp. And I will post the other photos probably below in the blog post of this fig uh, to show you that difference in the red pulp. Hmm. Very, very fruity. And it almost is giving me vibes of like, maybe it's just spoiled. When you inject the figs with the water and pollen solution, finding a lot of the pulps are turning a weird color and it's probably not working out. This one to me doesn't have a significant increase in flavor. In fact, it may even be worse in flavor and because it's sort of watered down on the inside. Uh, you know, this pollination process is very strange. There's a lot of nuance and and interesting conversations to be had and we don't really fully understand it. It's a shame, I really wanted to get one that was perfect like this uh, for this review. But again, I will, I will definitely cover um, this variety uh, in different photos and writings below this video to further describe this fig. But I'm not really picking up actually much of a better flavor from it um, than when it was unpollinated. Not that it's not gonna, that it's gonna do that consistently. Uh, maybe I just didn't do this correctly, but the uh, difference there in pulp uh, is probably a good indication that it's uh, turning spoiled rather than actually benefiting from the pollination. And what I remember from a couple days ago is that the fig had a really nice texture to it. That one there tasted really watery and watered down. Um, it was a nice thick and dense pulp, fruity, um, not exactly super berry-like, but a really nice texture and flavor uh, that to me just screams it's a high quality piece of fruit and a high quality uh, variety. So that was Nin ZS there, guys. I hope I had, I wish I had more to, to share on it and we'll keep updating you guys, as I said, below in this video. Uh, but thank you guys here for watching this one. Hit that subscribe button for me, hit that like button and check out the other videos on the blog, figboss.com, for more content like this. Take care.